Hey everybody, welcome back. Just thought I'd like to talk a little bit about cleanup crew today, or at least my selection and choices and why I've chosen them for the most part. Uh, first I'm going to say quarantine your fish and your corals and your invertebrates. It's very important and that way you'll eliminate any one unwanted pests that you might otherwise wind up with in your display tank. That's right. So on the top of my list is going to be, uh, there's two first place winners for the top of my list and that is Stomella snails and Trochus snails because they both breed in the tank. They do an excellent job and uh, I really appreciate the work they do. They, they're surgical in their precision, I must say, as far as cleaning stuff right up to the edge of the coral. Also have strawberry top hat snails and Neisseria snails. They do a great job. Um, Ceris snails are also on my list. And shrimp, we have six shrimp. I also have turbo snails. They also have produced in the tank. They've also reproduced in the tank. We're still waiting for these two to spawn again. Should do it again shortly. Uh, we have six shrimp in the tank. We have two peppermint shrimp, two skunk cleaner shrimp, which uh, do clean the fish as well as uh, sometimes they clean the corals and things out of their food as well as the ground and the crevices in the rock. And we have two fire shrimp. I've got two cucumbers. Um, I'm not sure where the one cucumber is at the moment. He seems to have... He's around somewhere. I can't, can't see him with the camera. And uh, we have a pink pink cucumber, a pink edible cucumber, it's called in the sushi bars or the sushi stores. And uh, we have uh, this wonderful pink spiny cucumber that currently has all of his tongues extended. And he's pretty cool to watch eating. He uh, takes those delicate little tongues once they're full of phytoplankton and like a sword swallower down his throat with them, cleans them off. Once they're licked clean, he puts them out to collect more phytoplankton. There's this guy here, a skunk cleaner shrimp. And somebody once uh, mentioned that uh, these little guys, the fire shrimp, look like they're wearing go-go boots. I'll let you be the, uh, the judge of that. There's one of those trochus nails. They are one of the big heroes in my tank. And after that we have uh, brittle starfish. Unfortunately I don't have any brittle starfish that are out. They're usually out at night when you see them and when you feed they stick their appendages out of the crevices to help grab some food as it floats through the water column. One of the blue sponges we have. There's a multicolored sponge and a yellow sponge. And I do have a red sponge in here somewhere. And there's some purple sponge on the overflow back there. That's some purple sponge we have going in this tank. Um, also, uh, sea urchin. I would, uh, I can recommend the tuxedo urchin over a pincushion urchin or a Halloween urchin as they may be called. They're all very entertaining and uh, the, the pincushion urchin seems to pick up more things and deposit them around to carry them around and pick rocks up and stuff. Whereas the pincushion urchin doesn't do that quite as readily and uh, coming in on uh, the end of our cleanup crew scale are the conchs or conch uh, depending where you're from I guess depends on the pronunciation I don't see any visible at the moment they do tend to bury themselves in the sand and they can disappear for quite a while days or a couple of weeks at a time they can uh, they can disappear for so Oh, there's a conch down there. These big 
busy cleaning under the crevice, the crevice between the sand and the rock. I don't know if you can quite see that. It gets pretty fuzzy. My photography isn't the best. Anyways. Those are my selections for a cleanup crew. But I would recommend getting a quarantine tank if you haven't got one. If you're planning on starting in this hobby, start a quarantine tank. And you'll avoid getting pests and unwanted things in your tank. That's the easiest way to do that. So, I hope this video was helpful for you. I did have crabs at one time. I won't have crabs again, not in the tank. They tend to eat all the snails. And uh, I, should try, I did try putting them in the sump, but I was worried that they would foul up the, uh, and get in the return pump and foul the impellers. So, um, I just avoid having the crabs all together. They tend to eat what they want, when they want. My experience, I had some, uh, calories as well and I discovered the hard way in the quarantine tank that uh, is where I found I had them I put them in the quarantine tank and they must have eaten a small college fund of zoanthids uh, in a few hours like four to six hours um, anyways I hope everybody's having a great day and um, we'll see you next time have a great day.